right, sisters. Shalom, sisters. Okay, so today we'll be covering um, Rachel and Leah part two. Last week we left off in chapter 29. Um, and so today we will be completing chapter 29 and moving forward to chapter 30. Okay, so in chapter 29, We'll start off in, um, I believe we left off in verse 31. Um, Sister Naisha, would you like to read, uh, what is it, like the next five verses, chapter, um, verses 31 to 35? Better now? Can you guys hear me? Okay, I'm reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures. And Yahuwah said to Leah, was in, unloved, and he opened her womb, but Rael was barren. And Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, for Yahuwah has looked on my affliction, because now my husband is going to love me. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, because Yahuwah has heard that I am unloved, he gave me this son too. And she called his name Shimon. And, he, and she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband is joined to me because I have borne him three sons. So his name was called Louis. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I praise Yahuwah. So she called his name Yahuda, And she ceased bearing. Amen, sister. Thank you. Um, there's a lot in these verses. Um, anything that you'd like to pull from what you just read? Okay. Um, you know, obviously, I think the first thing that sticks out to me is the compassion that Abba Yahuwah has on Leah. Um, you know, it says that in verse 31 that, um, that Yahuwah saw that she was unloved and because of that, he opened her room so that she could be loved. And it, I think it is um, a kind of in a beautiful expression, even though I'm not a mother, um, I know, and I think we talked about this and touched on this in past studies, um, how much of the identity of these women came through the children that they bore. So I think it's a wonderful act of compassion that Abba Yahuwah has on her to, you know, literally and spiritually open her womb so that um, she could experience love because, you know, I've heard it said there's nothing like the love that a mother has for, you know, her, her babes. Yeah, praise y'all. And I so think that's the first Yes, definitely. Uh, I see that too. Um, how he hearkened to her, to Leah, like he said, you know, um, in verse 30, thirty-one, and when the, and when Yahuwah saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. And it's interesting about what you uh, about the name um, with. Cause I wrote down that Reuben, being her, being her first son, means behold a son, and this is um since it's her first son, it was like with an excitement coming out of Leah. Like, this is, okay, I have this, I have a son, I, I bear a child for you. And, um, and so it's, it's interesting um, how the names have meaning. You know, they have a, they're not just, like nowadays it's not just a, randomly a name, but it has a meaning and it ties into the situation that they're they're found in. So that's that's very interesting. Um, let's see. Anything else, sisters? Uh, I had a comment. So in I also noticed verse thirty one as well, and it it reminded me of. Uh, it, it reminded me of Hagar. Uh, is it verse 31? Where it said, Yahuwah saw that she was unloved. Yeah, verse 31. And it reminded me of Hagar, because remember, you know, we went through, you know, Yah sees her. 
you know, and here we have another case where another woman, another child of his, a daughter of his is in distress and, and he sees her and, you know, he, he hears us, he knows when, you know, we're going through things and he, he comes to the rescue in both occasions with Hagar and here, right here with, with Leah, he, he read, he, the, the rescue here is him literally opening up her womb. Like, I don't know what the physical issues were that were preventing her from bearing a child, but he saw fit to, to heal her and, and, and right the wrong in her body so that she could bring forth that son like you were saying like you both were saying so that it would turn his head <laughs> or you know it would, it would turn his head to say he has to take notice because he's you know she bare, she bore him a son so that was beautiful and um you can also see uh leah it almost like when, where it says in uh, verse 32, surely Yahuwah hath looked upon my affliction. So it, it, all, it, shows, you know, it shows that Leah has, she's turned to the father. She's leaned on him. You know, like she's been, she's been praying to him. And that, that to me is like, a, it's a characteristic that, um, that Leah has that is, you know, that is pleasing to the father. It's a good characteristic. And she must have cried to him um, uh, that she, verse 33, she says, and she conceived again and bore a son and said, because Yahuwah has heard that I am unloved. Um, so I would imagine that she cried out to him, you know, he doesn't love me. He doesn't love me, um, you know, because, you know, she's saying directly that he heard her which I think is, is a nice affirmation Whoa. for Levi. No, <laughs> it's a nice affirmation um, because sometimes we can feel like we're not being heard, you know, by you who, especially um, when you're longing for something that maybe hasn't happened. You know, she really desperately loved Yaakov. It seems very clear to me that he was very much in love with him. Amen, sister. You know, and I looked up the names. Um, let's see. And Yahuwah has heard I was hated. He has therefore given me this son also, and she called his name. Simon, Simon, how do you pronounce his name? I think I might be saying it incorrectly. What, how do you pronounce his Hebrew name, Sister Nisha? Or Sister June? Shimon. 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 Oh, Shimon. Shimon. He, his name means, it's, uh, let's see, H, H8095, which means hearing. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that his name, again, represents the circumstances that they're in mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she kind of says that when she says, um, because it starts off with because Yahuwah has heard me and I am in love, he gave me this son, mm -hmm. and she called him hearing because he heard. So that's that's also beautiful to name your children according to the, cause it's like this constant reminder every day that the Ahua heard her hearing, come here, <laughs> you know, uh, because of that meaning with behind the name. Yeah. And again, she goes back and she praises the father, you know, again, she, um, you can hear her. You can see that she, you know, she prays like she continues uh, to have like this relationship with the Heavenly Father with Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. um, Yahuwah has heard me. That's amazing. And then um, let's 
And then it's in verses uh, 34, she conceived again. And this time she says, now will my husband be joined unto me because I have borne him three sons. And here she has Levi. And again, Levi, just to kind of add to the names, how they have meaning, it says, um, I cannot recall the, let's see here. Oh, it says, join to, adhere to, or attach. So she, um, again, her face is just showing, it's being shown again here. And, um, and she's being long suffering as well. You know, she's kind of continuing to hold on, even though, she can, you know, you can see that Jacob hates her in the sense that, you know, she's wanting that love from him, and she's re and she's receiving the opposite of that. And um, but she's not going anywhere. She's hanging in there, and it's just amazing to see that, you know. Okay. Now my my translation says, in in verse thirty four. Uh, and, and she conceived again and bore a son and said, now this time my husband is joined to me because I have borne him three sons. And I, when I read that, I kind of wondered, uh, is, is she saying like he, he kind of wasn't really sleeping with her prior to that, but because now he knows that through her, he's getting his sons he joined with her again and then she bore that son like i mean I, i'm probably reading a lot into that <laughs> text but the way it was worded it, it kind of brought that up in my mind uh cuz it 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 seemed like maybe you know the unloved part that could have had something to do with it as well the physical aspect i have a thought about this and i think we see women today do this a lot. We see women of today, like I, for example, I have a, a girlfriend that um, got pregnant. She wasn't married to um, the father, but she did this in an effort to win his love. So it's really interesting because I think, you know, even in, what happened in ancient times. I mean, we see she's, you know, she's really seeking the love of Yaakov through these children that she's bearing, right? And thinking that that's going to draw him in closer. And honestly, times really haven't changed. I have a handful of <laughs> that, that have, quite frankly, try, attempted to do very similar things, you know? And um, so it's very interesting that even back then, what was happening back then and the way perhaps a woman might look at, you know, earning the affections of her suitor really hasn't changed that much. Because I think women, you know, if we're really honest, do that a lot. You know, they think, oh, if I have a baby, it will make him love me. Yeah, and, and thus the phrase, what is it, my baby's daddy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. In this right. case, like it, it makes me think, Sister um, Nisha. Does do they know? Like, I'm, I'm assuming that they would know that through the Pope, we have the twelve tribes. So, you know, through him, the seed would be called. So I'm almost wondering. Yes, like to kind of add to what you're saying, she's probably saying, look. I'm bearing all these children, you know, and they're not just any, it's just not any children, but these are children, which our heavenly father, which Yahuwah is going to use to carry on the lineage, you know what I mean? To carry on that promise. So I'm almost wondering if she has, um, I guess if she think uh, if in her mind, she's like, Oh, he's going to love me because like you said, not only am I giving him a child, but these are, special children that I'm bearing. I don't know. Just, just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, wake up, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. 
Oh, I kind of wanted to go over the last name as well before we leave, uh, before we move forward to uh, chapter 30. And because um, this is really interesting. In 35, it says, Now will I praise Yahuwah. Because again, she conceived. And it says, uh, Therefore, she calls his name Judah and then left bearing. And so here we have Judah, and Judah um, comes from, his name comes from H. 36 to 3, and it, it means praised, in the strong celebrated. So that's pretty interesting. Um, like, I will praise Yahuwah. And um, I believe it's through, I believe it's through Judah that the lineage does, that our Messiah comes through. Um, so that's very interesting. Yes. Yeah, the line of Yahuda. Mm. Yeah, praise y'all. Okay. And it, and it says, and she ceased bearing. I, I wonder why. I wonder, did her, did Yahuwah close her womb back up? Or she was just, she was beyond the age of bearing? Or she just stopped laying with her husband? Like, it makes you wonder what, what, why, you know? That is interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. She did, uh, I don't know if she had them like back to back, but she had, she bare four children. So maybe she needed some time, her wound needed some time to heal, possibly. But that's a good point, sister. Mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Um, Let's see, now we can uh, move forward to chapter 30, and um, if anyone would like to read verses 1 all the way to verse 6, uh, chapter 30. Can, uh, can you read for us, Sister Martha? If you don't want to read, I'll read. Okay, I'll try. Okay, it says, um, now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, give me children or else I die. And Jacob, Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel. And he said, I, am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? So she said, you will bear a child on my knees that I also may have children by her. Then she gave her Billa, her maid, as wife, and Jacob went into her, and Billa conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case, and he has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore she called him his name Dan. And Rachel's maid, Billa, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister. I'm sorry. Then Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed, I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. Keep going. Yeah, that's okay, sister. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Would you like to comment on something that you read, sister Martha? Well, not as, you know, this story to me, it's so crazy, but well, the whole Bible itself sometimes, sorry, the whole Bible itself to me, sometimes some of these stories, they're so surreal, like, I can't believe it. Um, but this one, you know that when I kind of see man's, um, how can I explain it? When Jacob, I feel like Jacob was given a wife, but he wanted the one that he wanted. But God gave him Leah, even though he didn't want her. And that to me was like, there goes, you know, sometimes it's the things that we want. God is giving us something, and but we want what we want because that's our human flesh. So I saw that more. I guess that's why there was so much competition between the two sisters because I think that God did give, give her Leah, and then he wanted Rachel, which that's who he really worked for. But I think that in his whole concept, he didn't see that he was getting really what he needed. And even though he was tricked and everything um, because of what he wanted, but I think that that's 
the whole thing that I got from it. And that's why there was so comp so much competition between the two sisters because the flesh wanted this one, but God was giving him this one. So I saw this in the story and it kind of just caught my attention that sometimes, it, at least me, I, I sometimes see myself like, God, God is giving me this and I still want this and just quit it, Martha. Just, you know, stop it. So I don't know. That's from this whole story. That, that's something that I always got it. No, that's definitely interesting. Um, and it, you know, it's, so you have Rachel and then you have Leah. And I just wanted to make a quick comment on um, how Leah had good qualities. She had, you can see that, you know, she ha she's praising, she's praying to Yahuwah. Yes. And, um, and you don't see that from Rachel because, it, you know, correct me again if I'm wrong, sisters, but like in verse, um, okay in the first verse and when rachel saw that she bare jacob no children rachel envied her sister and already envied is one of those it's not a um how would you say it's not equality or it's not a fruit of the ruach you know she envied her sister even though Je even though jacob you know obviously loved her more than leah and then she told jacob give me children children or else I'll die so um and then Jacob answered and said and he was angered and said um am I Elohim said who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb I guess so what I'm seeing from this is that Rachel again it's not going to Yahuwah and praying to him but she's coming yeah. to Jacob and blaming him and so it's interesting like you said sister like how our Heavenly Father sees Rachel and he sees and he sees Leah and he sees Leah for who she really is, like the inside. And Jacob is seeing Rachel for who she is from the outside. He's just for the you beauty. know exactly. So that's the outer yeah. beauty. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Sister Linda. And Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Sister Linda. Shalom. I apologize, ladies. I was sitting right here and I was so engrossed in my studies. I didn't even realize what time it was. I apologize. I said, oh, no, I was thinking 7. I'm thinking 7.30 for some reason. I'm sorry. I apologize. Sitting right here, right here, waiting for the study to start. And I just had my times mixed up. But um, as I was sitting here uh, doing my study, you know, I started seeing uh, Rachel from another perspective uh, this time. Um, I think that, well, we know that infertility uh, can cause uh, psychological and emotional uh, disorders such as like turmoil in a person's life, frustration, depression, anxiety, um, hopelessness, guilt, feelings of wor worthlessness, even now, even today. In our, mod, in our modern uh, days now, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same thing. Uh, women still go through these psychological uh, disorders, and I think that uh, this um, feeling that she had, that Rachel had, truly uh, uh, was affecting her, her 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 existentialism, her existence. You know, like she felt. Uh, within herself that it was a, a woman's functionality to uh, have uh, children. That was her impulse to care for children because that wasn't being fulfilled. You know, she went to, through all of this anxiety and everything. And another thing that we know from a psychological aspect that um, this can affect, that infertil infertility can affect is uh, ma it can cause marital problems. And it looks like it caused them to begin to argue a bit that, you know, to find pretty much like a, a marital problem that even today arises a lot of time from the frustration of a woman uh, not being able to uh, bear. I just want to share that. Thank you so much, Sister, um, for bringing that. <laughs> And um, in verse six, um, it says, and Rachel said, Elohim hath judged me and he hath also heard my voice. Oh, actually, 
before that um, because of her frustration with not being able to bear a child, this is kind of interesting. And um, I want to hear the thoughts of what you ladies have to say, but it seems like out of her frustration and her anger, she responded to that. And I think in the Bible, it talks about for us not to respond in anger, you know, to be at to be peace at peace with our sisters and our brothers. And so here we have Rachel and with good and yes, she has good reason to have that frustration. Like Sister Linda said, you know, we don't know exactly how long it's been that she's been trying to have a child with a Jacob. And so again, here she sends um, her, her handmaid, Bilha, uh, to, uh, excuse me, in verse four it says, and she gave him Bilha, her hand, handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. Because she, she out of frustration, she was thinking, okay, I, at least I will conceive through my handmaid. And so, and she did, and Rachel said, Elohim hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son, therefore she called his name Dan. And again, Dan, uh, I looked it up and it means judged kind of interesting but but she does um she does bear a child but it's through her handmaid if I'm saying that correctly so that's kind of interesting she kind of but for me it's like I guess what I'm questioning is that she's doing this she did this with anger with frustration for like the wrong reasons I guess I mean I can understand she wants a child but it was like through the anger that she did this. Um, Sister Martha? Um, do you think that maybe she's also doing it out of, like in that part where it says, God has judged my case and he has also heard my voice and given me a son. I, actually, I see her a little bit humble there um, because she's, she's like, okay, he heard me. I can't have children, but at least he made it possible for my my servant to go ahead and, and have one for me. And I'm, I'm sure she raised the child as her own. Um, so I kind of see a little bit of nobility in her by, by actually saying that. Um, I don't know. That's just my little input there. No, I, because I, she I, got, she got mad. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to, I just said, um, I see that too. And, um, mm -hmm. what you're talking about that, Almost like that humility that in verse six. I'm sorry, what were you gonna finish saying, sister Martha? No, um that also um when she, I guess when she got angry when, when Jacob got angry with her also and um anger was aroused against Rachel, I don't know, maybe she she saw that in, in that moment I think is that she acted out of impulse. Um, when she saw that he was angry, and that's when she said, "Okay, well, get my my servant and have a baby with her." Then that was, I think, that was out of impulse. But when she saw the baby, or when you know, when God gave her the baby, that's when you know. I guess I saw humility in her that she, you know, she was grateful. I saw it as gratefulness. Thank you. That's that's actually I can see that too. Um, she does say, Elohim had to judge me, but he has also heard my voice. Praise y'all. Okay. Um, would anybody like to read verses 7, um, oh, excuse me, verses 8 to 13? Also, one more comment I was thinking too that doesn't Rachel eventually go on to conceive, right? So possibly, I, I don't know. It seems I don't know. I'll have to come back to that that thought because I I'm reminded of Sarah who you know couldn't wait for Yah Yahuwah to move and gave and gave the handmaiden. And here we see later Rachel actually does bear a child herself. And I wonder, was she supposed to wait or not? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but 
I mean, Jacob surely was <laughs> had these all these women, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> bawling for his attention. That's for sure. He had what two wives, and each of the wives had handmaids, and they were all at some point going into the haystack, so to speak. So, what an interesting uh, environment to be in, right? <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, verse seven to how far? Um, I think it, sorry, verse eight. I forgot what the last verse we read. Um, so, uh, let's see, start in verse seven to, um, to 13. Okay. And Rachel's female servant, Bilhah, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister and I have overcome. So she called his name Napathali. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. And Leah saw that she had ceased bearing and she took Zilpah, her female servant, and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's female servant, Zilpah, bore Jacob a son. And Leah said, Fortune comes. So she called his name God, or Gad. And Leah's, oh, how far? I'm sorry. Keep going. Uh, yeah, keep going to 13. And Leah's female serpent, Zilpah, bore Jacob a second son. And Leah said, I am happy, for the daughter shall call me happy. So she called his name Asher. Thank you, sister. Um, yeah, I mean, there, <laughs> I agree with Sister Martha's comment about sometimes this stuff is really surreal. I mean, we know it it happened because it's recorded and it's Yah's word, but it's like a soap opera in some instances. And it was kind of like battle of the who can bear the next son, you know, like I give you my hand, you know, R Rachel's happy now and she actually says, um, I'm one up on my sister in so many words. I, uh, let's see what verse that was. I have wrestled with my sister and I have overcome, she says. <laughs> and then as soon as her handmaiden has the son, then Leah's like, okay, I'm going to give Yaakov my handmaiden, you know, so very interesting. Um, and what's even more interesting than all of that is that Yahuwah uses it all. He uses all of it to create the 12 tribes worldwide to, you know, and it's amazing how the Heavenly Father can take our mess <laughs> and turn it into a miracle. His plan, you know, nothing will derail his plan. Even our soap opera-ness, if you will, or our drama, you know, he can still work <laughs> through our you know, humanity, if you will, you know, and I guess that goes all the way back to, you know, Adam and Eve and how they, they kind of derailed, but he still, you know, humankind survived and, you know, he sent a savior and, and so on. So, so yeah, those are all my comments. Um, and Sister Martha has her hand raised, by the way. You know, I was noticing how it states when you were actually reading that part with great wrestling, I have wrestled with my sister and indeed I have prevailed. Isn't it interesting how that little phrase is when Israel's, when Jacob's name is changed from Israel, how, um, you know, the, the, the angel, God, Yahuwah, how when they're changing his name, it's kind of like the same words. And I forgot what, what chapter it's on, but um, that to me was so interesting because that's actually her saying it. And um, in the, when, when Jacob's name is changed to Israel, 
it's God saying it to him. So that to me was kind of interesting because the words are similar because he had, he had wrestled with men and he prevailed. And because of that, his name was going to be changed to Israel. That to me was a little like, wow, like, I don't know, just a little interesting, actually. I forgot. I just forgot the chapter. But that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Praise the Lord. Sister Linda, did go ahead. Oh, okay. Where is it? Oh, am I unmuted? Oh, I'm more unmuted. Oh, uh, Sister Martha, I think. Um, but you're, you're looking for 32, Genesis 32 and 28, around that area there, 32 and 28. But what I wanted to say um, about this few little verse, the few verses right here that really caught my eye is uh, I really sympathized with um, uh, Bilha and uh, Zilpa, the handmaidens. Here they, you know, here the two sisters is going through their thing, but the, the, the two handmaidens are being used. And as women, you know, we always have a sensitivity about any women being used or enslaved or anything in that particular manner. Now, here they are de with others determining uh, who they would have a baby by, who would go into them to have to impregnate them. And then they're used as a, a surrogate and from that moment on, they lose all their custodial rights. And the uh, uh, Aaliyah and um, uh, Rachel, they named the, the babies from the beginning. They just took complete ownership of the gen. I sympathize. I sympathize with the type of lifestyle that, what kind of lifestyle that must have been. It must have been hard for them because a mother bonds with a child while the child is yet in her womb. And then to have a baby and to, uh, and it, of course, she would help to nurture and tend to it by being a handmaiden, but another woman would have to say over a child. So I, I sympathize with uh, the handmaidens in that particular aspect. Praise y'all. Yeah, praise y'all. I think, like, do they, when they give birth, uh, these handmaidens, at that moment, that child is given, handed over to. In this case, would be the Rachel or Leah. Right. So there's some bonding. It's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes you wonder, and I, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Sister Linda, because um, I, I think I struggle with this. In all honesty, um, when you look at the landscape of, you know, the place of a woman um, during this time. And obviously things are very, very different now. Um, but it made me think, where was their voice? Right. Did they have a voice. Like, I mean, did they even want to sleep with Yaakov? You know, as a servant, you know, I, I know all throughout scripture in the Tanakh, you know, there are instructions that, the, you know, how the servant is supposed to serve, his, you know, his or her master. And in all honesty, it's hard for me to wrap my head around that. Like, mm. I, I kind of like, what? That's not fair. <laughs> like, right. You know, what about what they wanted? I mean, does that matter? I mean, and maybe that's my flesh talking, but, you know, I've grappled with this a lot as we study these women yeah. because the construct of how they lived and how their lives were, you know, illustrated is very different than how we live today. I wonder so it if just makes me wonder. Children too. Like if I wonder if those were their only children, you know, or if they had other children. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I also, may I speak? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, I also thought about the, the handmaidens, you know, I'm sure that there was times that they might have fallen in love with someone around, you know, in the community and everything, and they wouldn't be able to, you know, uh, 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 consummate their marriage or get married. They would have to just, you know, do whatever the, um, 
our uh, ancestors from this well, this lineage, this particular lineage. And, you know, I think I think we're supposed to see these things in the word. I don't think that we're supposed to just grandiose stuff, you know, and 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 say everything that they did was right. I think as 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 people that are developing the father's character, the Mashiach's character, we're supposed to see where the weaknesses were and where we are supposed to be empathetic so that we can grow better. Don't you agree with that? Amen, sister. And as you were saying that, I just wonder too, like, um, just kind of to go, it, it could also be that these um, maidservants, they could have easily just felt like, please, to do something for them. It, it, I'm just saying, you know, it could just uh-huh. also, it could have been um, glad, I guess. I mean, and I can understand, I can, again, I can see the, I see what you ladies are talking about, but I also want to point out, what if they were, um, in agreement, a consensual, yeah. right, and just really wanted to satisfy them, love them, and just really wanted to satisfy, you know, their, uh, uh, what would you call that, the ones that were in charge, you know, like Leah and Rachel, what would they be called, and we knew, we, we knew Leah, and we knew that uh, Zilpa and Bilhah would be handmaids, what would Rachel, what, what would they call their mistress, right, I think their mistress, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure that there was a lot, there's like always like two different sides and everything. But at the same time, I'm sure they all in their hearts, they, they desire to be free. In the hearts of every human being, there is a desire to be free. A lot of people assimilate, they will assimilate to whatever uh, community type uh, or societal type orders that are in place. And many become conditioned and very comfortable with it. But at the same time, in the human heart, there should always be a desire to be free. And also, uh, you know, it's interesting because it was, um, it's through Jacob um, with the 12, 12 tribes. So you could only imagine um, for Rachel and Leah to conceive all them 12 tribes, you know, all them 12 children. So in this case, I, I can see their needing to be other women, I guess, Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, uh, Sister Leticia, I saw that also. I saw them as one big, uh, as a big family working together. You know, that's a lot of kids, 13 kids. And I saw them all as a as a, a, a family working together and in a joint consensus with them, as we'll see later on, they agreed with their husband and, and uh, submitted to their husband and did, left the father as the, 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 uh, the J- Yaakov wanted them to. But I, I kind of seen them as a real sisterhood. But I couldn't see them as too much of a sisterhood because the reason why I couldn't see them as too much of a sisterhood was because there was too much comp, uh, competition and jealousy and envy. If it had not been for the jealousy and the envy between the two sisters, I, I could have seen them as the wholeness of community. But because they were competing and envious of one another. It gave me the, the feeling that the environment had to be filled with a lot of like strife and envy and underhanded, you know, underhanded. I mean, simply by Leah knowing, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'll say this and then I'm going to just uh, zip it. With, with Leah, Leah knew what a sister was going through. Any sister, if it was my sister, I seen how my sister was anguishing, wanting to have a child. And here I am giving, having child after child. Don't you know I would have given my sister those mandrakes? I would have given my sister those mandrakes and I would have prayed. I would have been praying with my sister and hoping that my sister got pregnant. Yeah. But what did she do? She did the opposite. She couldn't even do that for a sister. So I don't see that real wholeness in the family order as it should be. Because most sisters, most sisters would have sympathized. They would have been very empathetic towards their sister not uh, having and seeing the depression, the anxiety, the stress, and the loneliness, the isolation, all of that. They would have wanted to do something about that if it was in their power to do so. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. So true, sister. That's a good point. And um, and like you said, you know, 
I just kind of wanted to uh, comment on Sister uh, Martha with a, in verse 8, with a great wrestling have I wrestled with my sister. It also reminds me of, uh, again, Jacob and Esau wrestling together, like um, having that strife because they're both trying to get that birthright. You know, it started all in the wound with, um, was it Sarah? Not Sarah. Um, oh my goodness. Um, but when they were both in the wound within, within, when they were both in the wound in their mother and Rebecca and even Rebecca had said, um, had prayed to the heavenly father and said, um, or had reached, had leaned on the father and said, I think it's in verse, um, gosh, I already forgot, but, um, how she said, I ha my, how she had mentioned her, she had children in her that were, um, I guess, wrestling with each other. And so, and so you see that with Jacob and Esau, and then you see it with Rachel and Leah, and then later on, like Sister had mentioned, you see it with Jacob again and um, the angel, which, which I believe it's Jehusha. So it's very interesting. Anything else, ladies, that you would like to bring out from that those verses that we just uh, covered? I think the only other thing that I just wanted to mention real quickly is um, verse 13 when it says, Leah said, happy am I, am I, for the daughters will call me blessed, and she shall call his name Asher. Um, and the reason I kind of wanted to talk about this verse is because I want to see if you ladies have any understanding on what this verse means. Um, what caught my attention was, for the daughters will call me, call me blessed. What daughters, I wonder if she's talking about, is she talking about future children or the future woman who would call her blessed? Um, any thoughts, sisters? What what verse, Miss Gladdy? Uh, that's verse, uh, chapter 30, verse 13. And uh, when I looked up that verse, um, let me, excuse me, the word blessed, it's H eight three seven, and um, which means I guess the primitive root for that one is um, to be straight, honest, or prosper. Let's see here. I don't know. I was just kind of wondering um, if Leah was talking as if, like, in the future, like. Happy am I for the daughters will call me blessed or um, like straight. It's just a thought. <laughs> and yeah, then again, I'm looking it up now in the the blue letter, and it um it 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 just basically is saying daughter uh. Daughter, girl, adopted daughter, daughter-in-law, sister, granddaughter. These so, as polite address, as designation of woman of a particular place, uh, daughter villages. So young women, women. So yeah, maybe just like you said, women in general. And maybe it goes back to, you know. The construct of the woman during this time and how intermingled her identity was with her seed. And, you know, perhaps the daughters being, you know, the other daughters of Zion, if you will, or the other daughters of, um, of Yasharal because women types, it was so important. I mean, again, their identity, we see this with all of the ladies that we studied up to this point, is that there is an intertwining with the identity of the woman with her seed. 
And so maybe that's why they will call her Baruch. Maybe we are the daughters, right? Because we are the daughters of Yasharal. And she is the mother of, you know, almost half of the 12 tribes <laughs> of Yasharal. And that was a huge thing for her. You know, she is the progenitor, if you will, of, you know, of, you know, the 12 tribes or, you know, six or what, five of the 12 tribes. And if that was of great importance to a woman, um, what, you know, what esteem and honor that would be that she would have that as her lineage which is maybe why, you know, Leah and Rachel were so keen to like go at it with each other, you know, you know, wrestle with one another because they were wrestling for this status, if you will. Praise the eye, amen, sister. Mm -hmm. Just talk. <laughs> I just real quick, I looked up wrestle as well, and it's really intriguing. I didn't look up the, the verse you mentioned, Letty, but I looked up Yaakov wrestling with Yah and the sisters wrestling, and it's actually two different words in the Hebrew. So it's interesting how they're both translated the same in English. Um, so the one where Yah is wrestling with Jacob, it, it's, it's the word um, A-B-A-Q, Abak, um, and it means um, to wrestle, grapple, get dusty, but dust. Uh, <laughs> um, a primitive root word, probably to float away as vapor but used only as a demonstration to debus, grapple, wrestle. And then, and that's Strong's H79. And the other one is H6617, Pathal. And check this out, ladies. It means to twist, to be twisted, to wrestle, to be twist. And then another one, um, Hith Pael, to be twisted. A primitive root to twine, to struggle, or figuratively be morally torturous. Mm. Um, shoe, shoe self, I don't know what that means, sorry. Uh, unsavory wrestle. And um, so I thought that was interesting. So it's, a, it's definitely a negative connotation um, in this one. And and I was even remembering, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, uh, I would have to look that one up. So it's very interesting. Whenever you see the word wrestle now, we'll have to see, like, there's, there's different ones. Very interesting. It's amazing. And I'm wondering, you know, and this might be something that comes out if we do studies on the different 12 tribes and the relationships that each of these tribes had with one another throughout history. Because we know that there was a lot of, you know, you know, fighting, if you will, or twisting or intermingling or wrestling within the 12 tribes, which, you know, separated the kingdoms, etc. So it would be interesting to see how, um, especially around the dynamic when she talks about, I've wrestled with my um, with my sister, with those particular tribes, how, you know, if that was prophetic in regards to how the relationship of those tribes, you know, communicated with one another. That's interesting. Sister Linda, you have your hand raised. I was wondering if you um, still have a comment. You okay? <laughs> yes. I, uh, you, you ladies, you did such a, a wonderful uh, uh, job of answering the question. I took my hand down. I was just going to just add that, well, this just simple, just a simple uh, response that, uh, yeah, we know that 
you know, women were valued by the, uh, uh, the, the amount of children that they had. And that uh, during those days, you know, that's how she, like, like sis, uh, Nisha says, that's how you get your, they got their status. And like the girls were saying, that's how they got their status. So, um, and, and, and we, we got to realize now where they were right here. There were other people here. They had, they were still at, over there at Le Bon's, over at Le Bon's house. They hadn't left. So they weren't just isolated or on their way in route to, uh, you know, get, go back to Jacob's uh, um, uh, country, uh, his home, his environment. They were in Laban's area. We know that there was other people there because they, he, he, she even had other brothers that shows up later on, right? And um, um, we know that there was other people that helped attend with that came out with Laban when he came out to uh to check to uh, uh to inspect looking for to inspect their uh goods looking for uh those uh idols that Rachel had stolen and everything. So they were in a community. So I, I just took it I've always just been under the impression that she was talking about the ladies that are here. You know, the ladies they're gonna call me blessed because you know because of all the you know the babies that I have and that that's what I thought. But uh, looking at it from some of the other perspectives, that brought even more depth and uh, other ways of looking at it also. And I appreciate that. I was contemplating those ways. That's why I took my hand back down. No, definitely praise y'all. Um, okay, sisters, we can, uh, anybody would like to read 14 all the way to 18? Oh yeah, I'll read it. Okay, thank you, sister. Okay, am I off? Of, okay, all right. You said uh, read. Uh, uh, for which verses, uh, sister? Okay. Yeah. Verses uh, fourteen, uh, all the way to eighteen. Okay, and Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, it is a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and wouldst thou now take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob uh, came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And Elohim heard uh, uh, hearken unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, Elohim have given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband, and she called his name Issachar. See a lot of strife and contention right here for sure. See a lot of desperation also to the point that looks as if Leah was uh, actually trying to hire her, hire Jacob. And um, we, you know, we 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 discussed the Mandrake as aspect uh, in the study with uh, Elder Rod in the afternoon Shabbat study a couple of weeks ago, and I looked up that issue of those Mandrakes, and I was astounded what I saw that um, they were supposed to have had an aphrodisiac effect, uh, known for uh, you know uh, causing women to get pregnant. But the astounding thing about it was that the the the, the, the Immature mandrake looked like a little grotesque little baby, and then as it grew, grew as it grew, it looked like a man, like a grotesque uh, man, and everything. So I suppose that in those days they really they looked at that and said, "Oh boy, look at the especially the little fat little uh, babies and everything." But it, there was quite a bit of uh, contention between Rachel and Leah, even to the point of uh, Rachel. Like letting her know, you know, you got to hire him. That's the only way he'll come in there to you is uh, because of the mandrakes. You're buying him. You know what I mean? So I, it's unfortunate that, but look at, but look what happened out of all that. Yasharel was birthed. 
So we see that things don't always run smoothly in the Father's plan, but he uses us in particular uh, uh, aspects. Things don't always run smoothly, but it's the purpose and the plan of Yah that they were submitted to, and that was fulfilled. What they were to do, they did. Yeah, regardless to the contention, the strife, the little arguing and the bickering and the, the struggles and everything that they had to went through, what was supposed to have been done that was the will of the Father that those 12, 12 tribes were born, they were born. And I found that, I learned something also, you know, when we uh, fill out our, uh, our, do our Bible study uh, questionnaire that you gave us for each week uh, to fill out, I learned that it's not, it, a lot of times we may not feel important or very essential in the Father's big plan. We may not be able to see ourselves as essential or uh, important as I'm sure they didn't see themselves important at all. They're the, the, the biggest scope of their mind was having babies. But look at that. It was what was in their loins, in the loins of Yaakov, that would come down through the generations, that would impact the entire world. Do you think they ever for a moment imagined this? I don't think so. I don't think so. So as long as we're part of the plan, I suppose we should really rejoice in that hope and just stay humble and stay obedient and just let the Father have his way. Who knows? One day, our generations, or even ourselves, may have a great impact in society. Praise y'all. Praise y'all, sister. Thank you. That's amazing. Um, and I think, I think, I think we will. You know, if you know, if we're like you said, if we're staying humble and obedient to the Father, and we allow ourselves to be used as a vessel. Right. Why not? Why not? You know. Yeah. Um, you said when you were doing the reading, something that came out that was kind of interesting is when you said, <laughs> with this, uh, the fighting amongst this, with Rachel and Leah, Rachel goes and tells Leah, the only way he's going to sleep with you is if you kill him those mantras. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that something? So by then she was pretty convinced. Yeah. He was her man that she, but yeah. you know, but look at Leah. Leah's telling, Leah's telling Rachel, you're st stealing my man. Isn't that the way it went? Leah was telling Rachel, you're stealing, you're trying to steal my man. You, you follow in so many words, just to, para just to paraphrase it. She said, uh, uh, oh, oh, you're taking my man, now you're going to take, you want my man Drake's also? You follow what I'm saying? You know, so she considered, because she was the first one married to him, in regards to how that turned out, but she was the first one, and she was holding on to that. And I'll tell you something, uh, Yaakov must have been visiting over there a whole lot other times besides those mandrakes, because he had seven, uh, he had, uh, seven children by her. He had seven children by her. He had six sons by her, and he had a daughter by her. He had more children by her than any of them. He started joining more frequently. <laughs> yes, yes, he started uh, congregating over there to see about the kids a bit much. <laughs> I blame Laban for the whole thing. <laughs> Back to Laban, right? <laughs> right. Wow. He yeah. gave both his daughters to the same man. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh, that's interesting yeah and also you know it's funny because um well it's not funny but in verse 17 elohim hearkened to, unto leah so his, it's unfortunate that this is the extent that she had to go to is that she for the exchange of the mandrake Jacob slept with her, but she conceived and she bare um, Issachar. Is that correct? Um, Verse 17. Uh, yeah. Issachar. Issachar. And, and I looked up Issachar's name and it means he will, he will bring a reward. Um, or in the root word, me, my hire which is 
which is in verse 18, that's what it says. This, and Leah said, Elohim has given me my hire. And that's the root word for uh, Issachar's uh, name, uh, which is H3485. And that to me, I don't know, I just kind of, I don't know, for me it's comforting that, you know, the Heavenly Father is he's really taking care of Leah um, in this case because Leah, you know, she had to go to this extent to just get the attention of her husband, you know, that she had to do the, which is in the beginning when I read it, I was like, wow, like, did she really just give him the mandrake for him to sleep with her, you know? But the other way I can see it is she's really wanting that attention from him, you know, that love from her husband because he is her husband. And so, um, and in 17, when it says, Elohim hearken unto Leah, and she conceived, and bear Jacob the fifth son. So that was just kind of interesting how throughout this, again, Leah, even though she's been hated and rejected from her husband, she has not given up. She continues to for that fight. And I think if I can um if I could uh use her as an example and apply it to my life, the way I would see it is not as my husband, like my physical husband, but my spiritual husband husband you know which is Yahusha um and and again look towards Yahuwah continually and praise him and love him through his son Yahusha because I see Leah doing that for Jacob like she continually you know after a rejection after you know as she continues to have that faith and that she's long suffering and and praise Yahuwah continuously with each child that she has um I don't know if that made any, made any sense, but I guess I just wanted to make a comment on that. You're making sense. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I actually have a rhetorical question because I know we only have like five minutes left. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably ask my hubby the same question. Like, cause, cause I just don't remember the answer. Like I know in some cases, the way they wrote in Torah, like when, for example, when Moshe went to Pharaoh and it said, Yahuwah hardened his heart, um, that it, it, and I, you know, and a lot of people ask, well, why would Yah, you know, harden his heart and then send the plagues? But it was whatever happened, they attributed it to Yah because they believed that anything that happened, Yah, it, you know, you, you attribute it to the father doing it. So if someone's heart was hard and you say the father hardened heart. So I mentioned that because here when it says, and Elohim listened to Leah, like, like it, it just makes me curious. Like, is it literally Yah heard her again, listened to her again and gave her this fifth son or was it because she had the fifth son she artic it's, she articulates it as he's he listened or the writer said he listened to her like the writer saying he listened to her because she had the son so just um something that i will dive deep into my personal study uh our sister sister linda has a, a answer for me i think go ahead sister linda yeah tried to answer such a deep question <laughs> yeah, and you have two minutes. You know what? But you know what? We was kind of like on the same wavelengths because when I was looking, when I was reading it, I looked at thirty and th thirty and twenty-two, and the same thing happened with Rachel, and Elohim remembered Rachel, and Elohim hearkened to her and opened her womb. You see, so and I was looking at those two words that uh, remember. Remember and um, um, uh, hearken. Now, hearken, the hearken is Shema. The right. hearken is Shema. So he, he heard her, and the, the Shema means to hear and obey. And, and Zakar, uh, that, mean, that word, uh, uh, remember, it means to recognize. You know, like, I, I felt when I looked at it, it was my day for him to reckon, recognize me. It was the day that he heard my prayer. 
he 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 saw my struggle. Do you follow what I'm saying? And, and that's how I, I got out of that because he hearkened to Leah over there with the mandrakes. Then he hearkened again with Rachel. It just showed an intimacy of the father being a part of his children's lives. As that's what I saw in it. Praise y'all. Praise y'all, sister. Do we have uh, enough time, sister, to read the last five verses? I'm down. You're down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ms. Jamie, would you like to read the last verses? Um, that would be 19 all the way to 24. Okay, sure. And Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, Elohim has presented me with a good present. Now my husband is going to dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. And afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. You don't hear much about Dinah, right? And Elohim remembered Rachel and Elohim listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, Elohim has taken away my reproach. So she called his name Yosef and said, Yahuwah has added to me another son. And it came to be when Rachel had born Yosef that Yosef said to Laban, send me on my way to go on my place to my land. Give my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you yourself know my service, which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. Ooh, he's trying to ask him to stay some more. For I have diligently watched that Yahuwah has blessed me for your sake. And he said, name me your wages and I give it. So he said to him. Thank you. Oh, okay. No, that you're fine. You're fine, sister. Um, let's see. You, did you stop at 27, sis? Uh, actually, <laughs> yeah, I, I read to 28, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I thought, I thought we were finishing up the chapter for some reason, but when I turn the page, there's a lot left in this chapter. <laughs> oh, no, no, um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I see more of this. Uh oh. I think Miss Letty is frozen for a, a moment there. Uh, well, I, I see more of the same uh, with um, the, the, the same pattern, if you will, of y all praise be to Yah when they, you know, the different wives are having the children and uh and then of course uh once yosef comes out yakob is kind of like that's a wrap let's move on <laughs> um and laban is still uh bartering if you will or finagling trying to get because i think i think I think that's true today in today's world. I think people do recognize that when there are certain people in their midst, be it the workplace, in a family, I think, I think there has to be some recognition that when that person's around or when they are involved, involved things kind of flow and, and, you know, Yah is with them. You know, and it seems like Laban was observing that and didn't want this favor that he saw that that Jacob had Yah's favor and and that it was brushing off on him and he didn't want Jacob to go. And then of course, you know, Jacob also had his daughters and his grandchildren and all of that. I mean, we have to consider that too. But I don't know, Laban seemed kind of like a a shifty family member though, <laughs> you know. Um, and Sister Martha has uh, a comment too, by the way. 
I was going to say that um, based on what you were saying, that sometimes there are people like that. I, I was going to say that that's us. We are the children of Israel. And wherever we go, we are always going to be those special people where we're going to be that special light wherever we go. And um, that's, that's us. That's God telling us that's us. <laughs> Amen, sister. We are shining our light. It says that we are living epistles. And so as we go, people see us living out our life as, as the word, you know. Uh, and actually, that's Shabbat's topic for tomorrow. Uh, living righteously is going to be our Shabbat topic for tomorrow. Anything else, sisters, before we conclude this um, this study? Okay, uh, this is going to conclude uh, part two of Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel. And um, I was thinking that if uh, you ladies wanted to finish part three, there is um, still a little bit more on these ladies, which is kind of, which I think it's kind of um, important because then we, um, we can explore what happens with Rachel and the hidden idols and the consequences that happens, that comes out of that. So, but for today, um, you know, thank you ladies for, you know, being present and, you know, it's just beautiful because I'm being edified and uh, you ladies bring forth so much wisdom and insight and so, I'm really thankful and, you know, praise y'all. So shalom. And again, I pray all have a beautiful Shabbat and um, full of peace and love. Shalom. Bye. Have a blessed night.